ladies and gentlemen, Blitzball champ Jason Ingram is back with another Pro Wrestling Talk live video. And wow. Wow. I just recently, not too long ago, got caught up on the semifinal matches of both the TJPW Tokyo Princess Cup 10 and the New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 33. And wow. The matches were just crazy. The outcomes were wow. So, semifinal matchups, you just want to go over those real quick and then make my way over to the finals matchups. Um, I'm here uh, chilling. Uh, got a little bit of time before I uh, grab myself a shower and then get ready to head to Greensboro to meet up with my good friend Visceral Motions and also get ready for AEW Collision in the Greensboro Coliseum. I'll be attending that with my dad live, so looking forward to that. Anyway, let's start off with the ladies. TJPW Tokyo Princess Cup 10. We had two incredible semifinal matchups. We had Miyu Yamashita versus Yuki Arai. And I must say, I know a lot of folks have talked a lot of smack about Yuki Arai. But I have to say, she had an incredible match with the Pink Striker. And honestly, she came very close. She came very close. Um, Here, let me see if I can prop this a little bit so it won't move around too much. One second. Ah, that's perfect. All right. So, Yuki Arai, incredible match with Miyu Yamashita. It was back and forth, traded a lot of strikes. She even hit um, a finally axe kick uh, across her head on, on the apron. And, I mean, they were just dodging a lot of different attacks, counters, back and forth. And Yuki Arai looked really, really solid in this match. And, honestly... I'm really not surprised that she even made it to the semifinals in the first place after looking at the performance she's been putting on. But out of nowhere, out of nowhere, when it counted the most, Miyu Yamashita was able to eventually connect with that skull kick and put away Yuki Arai for the one, two, three. So Miyu Yamashita is the first to qualify for the TJPW Tokyo Princess Cup 10 finals. So she's punched her ticket in. And then we had an incredible main event that really surprised the mess out of me. The second semifinal match. The international princess champion, Rika Tatsumi, the white dragon, going up against the casual beauty, Yuki Kamifuku. And I must say, the casual beauty has greatly leveled up. Greatly. And, you know, Rika Tatsumi, you know, the only Grand Slam champion in TJPW, definitely brought her A-game as usual, which shows why she's worthy to hold that title as well as International Princess Champion. But this semifinal match, belonged to the casual beauty Camille as she was able to put her away with an avalanche famouser and the casual beauty punches her ticket dethroning the Grand Slam champion slash international princess champion Rika Tatsumi to advance to the finals of the Tokyo Princess Cup 10 for the first time. Y'all, I gotta, I gotta be real with you. I did not see this coming. I definitely did not see this coming. 
We're getting the pink striker versus the casual beauty in the finals for tomorrow at Corquin Hall. Let me tell y'all something right now. I know a lot of people are probably expecting Miyu Yamashita to win this tournament. But I want y'all to realize something. Look at the path that Yuki Kamifuku has gone through to make it to the finals. Beat now Kakuta in the first round. Beat former international princess champion Miyu Watanabe. And she just beat the current international princess champion and the only Grand Slam champion in TJPW history, the white dragon Rika Tatsumi. Like, that's huge, y'all. I mean, honestly, think about it. How many of y'all predicted Yuki Kamifuku to make it to the finals of this tournament? I know I didn't. I know I definitely didn't. If y'all remember correctly, I actually picked now Kakuta to beat her in the in the first round. But now look at her. Now, not to look down on Miyu Yamashita, she did her thing as well. I mean, she beat the Princess of Princess champion Mizuki in the first round, then defeated Moka Miyamoto in the second round, and then just finished beating Yuki Arai, I mean, to be honest, Yuki Kamifuku has kind of had the harder path. Even with the shakeup of the semifinal bracket, she's had the harder path. So, while, while I won't be mad if Miyu Yamashita wins this tournament, to keep it real with y'all, a part of me actually wants Yuki Kamifuku to do this and actually beat Miyu. I think she can do it. I honestly think she could do it. If she can beat a Grand Slam champion, you know, somebody that has been on a roll, especially since winning the International Princess Championship, she's very capable of beating Miyu Yamashita, which many say is the ace of Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. Kamiyu has leveled up quite a bit, y'all. And it looks like she's getting quite a push. Now, I'm not saying that if she defeated Miyu, that she's going to be the one to dethrone Mizuki. But... I'm actually, I'm starting to dig this push that she's getting, y'all. So, like I said, and I believe, if I remember correctly, Yuki Kamifuku, I believe, has only been a princess tag team champ. I don't think she's won a singles championship yet. So, you know, just, just a thought. But, yeah, I honestly... A big part of me would love to see the Cinderella story of this tournament finish with Kamiyu and her hand raised in victory. Don't get me wrong. I love Miyu Yamashita. I've met her twice. But I'm actually going to be rooting for Yuki Kamifuku to pull this off. Yep. I want to see the casual beauty actually pull off the upset. I think she can do it, y'all. I actually think she could do it. With how her matches have been up to this point, don't be surprised if she pulls it off. I mean, you you look at Miyu, Mocha Miyamoto came pretty close. She came close. And, you know, she pulled off the upset on uh, Hyper Misao. And this is what is reminding me that even though Yuka Sakazaki is going to be moving to the States beginning of the year, more and more, I'm really getting the idea that TJPW, they're capable 
of getting other stars to rise up. I mean, look at what they're doing now with this tournament. I mean, I know you got, you know, two of the pillars, you know, Yuka Sakazaki getting ready to move at the end of the year. Maki Ito, who's been back and forth, you know, mostly been in the States. You know, I, I really feel like, you know, we're starting to see some names really rise. Yuki Kamifuku, Moka Miyamoto, Suzume. You know, just little by little. Keep an eye out, y'all. And like I said, I know Miyu Yamashita may be the favorite to win this tournament, and that's understandable. Definitely. All I'm saying is don't be shocked if Kamiyu pulls it off. Don't be shocked if the casual beauty, Yuki Kamifuku, who just beat Rika Tatsumi clean, clean, end up winning this tournament. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. But <clears throat> the finals will uh, be tomorrow, uh, August 12th, which I, or excuse me, August 13th. But I believe on my time, uh, East Coast time, they're going to be showing it late, uh, late tonight. But I I'll I might be able to catch it when I get home from AEW Collision, but we'll see. We'll see. But if not, I'll be able to catch it uh, tomorrow um, after church and before I go to the DPW show. Okay. Let's switch gears. G1 Climax 33. Semifinals are in the books. We had Evil versus Okada, Kazuchika Okada. And, you know, I got to keep it real. I am kind of nervous about the finals, y'all, after this match. I want y'all to think about something. Okada just withstood all the shenanigans and interference that evil and house of torture threw at him by himself. And still won to punch his ticket to the finals. And Okada has a chance to three-peat. I'm nervous, y'all. I'm, I'm nervous about this. I mean, look at what just happened. Okada didn't even have anybody from chaos, no help or anything, withstood all of that interference from each of the members of House of Torture and still won. Withstood all the low blows and just still won. Yeah, John Elite did it all on his own. That scares me, y'all, with him going into the finals. <sighs> he could very well three-peat. Just, just, the only thing I can say is, don't be mad. Well, I mean, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be mad. I'll say that. But, I guess don't be crazy shocked if Okada three-peats. Because not even evil and all the loads of interference and shenanigans were enough to put him away. That's all I can say. Then we had Tetsuya Naito versus Will Ospreay, which was phenomenal and definitely was happy that was the main event of the semifinal. But yeah, I kind of I kind of feel a little bit for Naito. He he looked like he got jacked up in that match, especially towards the end. I mean, he he was able to walk out on his own and everything, but just the way he was taking those shots and whatnot from Osprey. 
Ooh, looked like he, he looked loopy. He looked very, very loopy. But, um, phenomenal match. Back and forth. It really could have gone either way with how that match went. But, even after just taking all the offense from, from Osprey, Ozcutter, Sky Twister Press, Hidden Blade, Naito still kicked out and was still eventually able to hit that Destino on Will Osprey to cover him for the one, two, three. And there you have it, folks. Our G1 Climax 33 finals will be Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito. Now, I know a lot of talks about the idea of Tetsuya Naito winning and then him and Sonata at Wrestle Kingdom, which very well could still happen. But it's like I said not too long ago, I'm kind of nervous because Okada, with all that he dealt with, all that he withstood, he could he could still win this match in three P. Which I know that's gonna look bad <laughs> for a lot of folks. But um but yeah, like it should be interesting. I uh, really, really wonder how this is gonna finish. But I'm hopeful that, that Naito will get it done and that we'll get we'll get that big main event match. Um, has anyone ever three-peated the G1? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Um, Okada has won four, um, with two back-to-back -back first time, and then, uh, just recently, uh, the last two. But... From what I know, from what I remember, I don't believe anybody has three-peated. So, this would be the first time. Yeah, this would be the first time any, anyone has three-peated a G1, if I remember correctly. If some if somebody else knows, um, do correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah. So, it could happen. It could happen. And I mean, it's Okada, so don't be surprised. It's Okada, but I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful that Tetsuya Naito will pull it off and he'll win this year's G1 Climax. But, but yeah, so the finals of the G1 Climax, I believe is, is still going to be in uh, Rio Goku uh, tomorrow. And then TJPW's Tokyo Princess Cup Finals will be at the um, at Corquin Hall. So, man, all all the different venues are gonna gonna be hit this this weekend with New Japan Pro Wrestling, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling, uh, Stardom as well. Stardom has you know Stardom X Stardom uh, pay per view, but. Yeah, a lot going on this weekend in Japan when it comes to pro wrestling. But, you know, with tournament season going strong, two tournaments are getting ready to reach their climax, no pun intended. But don't forget, we still got the five-star Grand Prix with stardom going, as well as the Pro Wrestling NOAA N1 Victory Tournament. And then, uh, oh yeah, and then don't forget, next weekend, next weekend we got uh, the All-Star Junior Festival, which uh, I'm looking forward to, to previewing that once they get the card for that fully finalized. And then, of course, uh, Impact Wrestling's um, Multiverse, or Impact Wrestling New Japan Pro Wrestling's Multiverse United 2, which is looking to to shape up, which I believe they just confirmed uh, 
that Julia is going to uh, have a match with not only Deanna Perrazzo, but also Momokogo and one other yet to be announced uh, competitor. So there's that. Um, yeah, John Elite and All In is in a few weeks at Wembley. Yep, uh, end of the end of August. So there's there's a lot to look forward to this month for sure. Whole lot to look forward to. Um, seedling anniversary show where Sari gets her title shot for the Beyond the Sea Singles Championship against the Ace Arisa Nakajima. So we got that. Um, Stardom New Blood next week, as well as a Midsummer Festival, I believe, is also next week. So, wow. There's this month is loaded. This month alone is loaded. So, but yeah, but yeah, I had to get on here, do a, do a quick video, but just, wow, those matches were incredible. But, um, yeah, finals are set for Tokyo Princess Cup, Miyu Yamashita versus Yuki Kamifuku, G1 Climax 33, Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito. So looking forward to it. Um, I'm hoping to be able to watch both and then uh, give my review before I head out to uh, DPW Beast Coast tomorrow. So, so yeah. But that's going to do it. Um, oh, John Elise says, have fun at Collision in a few hours. Thank you so much. I plan to. And I believe... They're also, either before or after the show, I think they're going to uh, do an ROH taping. So definitely looking forward to seeing that. But um, so far, the only thing I know for Collision is um, the AEW Trios titles will be on the line. We've got House of Black defending against um, FTR and CM Punk. Uh, the ladies are going to be in action. I believe it's uh, Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale going up against, I believe it's Mercedes Martinez and Diamante, if I remember correctly. And then the, the Acclaimed are supposed to be in action. Um, I didn't hear about any other matches announced yet, but um, definitely looking forward to that and the ROH uh, taping. So should be really, really good. But yeah, anyways, um, I'm going to get ready to shower because um, I went Latin dancing last night, came home and crashed, and I, I smell. So <laughs> I'm going to get ready to go take a shower so I can get ready to, me and my dad head to Greensboro, get some delicious, authentic Chinese food, chill out, and then AEW Collision. But anyway, uh, thank y'all so much for tuning in, and hopefully I will catch up with y'all later. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and hope you enjoyed this, this live stream. For another Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. My name is Jason Ingram. I will catch up with y'all later. Enjoy this beautiful, beautiful weekend. Peace.